Hey, my name's Justin, and this is The Art of Repair, and today we're going to focus on something that nobody seems to really be talking about. It's not really discussed at all. I don't even know why, but we're going to do it today. We're going to talk about basic IC removal on pretty much whatever you want. Let's do it. Okay, so like I said, there's not a lot of discussion where I see people specifically talking about that one part of the process where you're taking a chip off of a motherboard. I see a lot of people discussing what happens when you do it wrong, where you're ripping pads up, you're freaking out, you're overheating the board, damaging things on the other side, lifting components under underfill in other places. Oh, I see it. I see it. So I know people are having trouble with it, but there's no real discussion of how to do it. Not only that, there's no real discussion of how to do it to a point where you can kind of like watch your game and improve over time because those visual cues are absolutely important to your overall growth. So let's jump in here. Let's talk about this for a minute and let me help you improve your basic IC harvesting game. Okay, so we've got our motherboard over here. We've got an IC. Let's go ahead. Let's jump in here. Give me those super tips, Justin, and show me how to do this right because apparently nobody else is talking about it and you've got the secret sauce. So what is it? Um, first and foremost, I'll tell you right now, I know that I am always saying, if you're not fluxing, you're not soldering. Well, we're not soldering things together right now. We're taking it apart. So we are not using flux. And just bear with me on this. You'll understand why here in a little bit. Okay. So we're not using flux. And I would say the only other major, major, big, huge, please listen to me. Don't forget it. Tip is... Don't let me catch you prying an IC chip up. I've seen it a million times. I've seen it from people that act like they know what they're doing, that talk online like they know what they're doing. But when I see them do things in person, it's just uh, it's just a sad situation because I'm just heartbroken on the inside because they're prying up chips. Don't be prying up chips. Don't be that person. Anyway, let's get in here. Um, so we're going to be using hot air today to get the solder to a melting point. Um, and we are going to be using a set of tweezers to pick the chip up. How hard can that be? Well, I would say that if we are using the tweezers that most people use, which are going to be straight tweezers, and you can see right here they've got straight ends on them, that what you're normally going to do is you're going to come down here, you're going to be using your hot air or whatever to get it to temperature. Uh, maybe you're even using flux. Some pe the, argument, the argument with flux is that it's a better thermal conductor. That's fine, but we're not using it right now. And you're going to find out why. Um, so like I said, the, 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 the way people normally do this is they come down with the straight tweezers and they either grab directly onto the IC chip or they kind of cock to the side here and they start tapping on it, right? Now, the deal here is that the technician is waiting for all of the solder to become wet and move and movable so that when they tap it that they know that when they pull up the chip that they're not going to rip any pads that are still dry or not you know not in that fully you know wet state right and i think that's kind of where the, the the failure point comes here where people they're they're a little too scared of the heat and what it does and they're not taking a look at the process and saying okay what can I do to improve my odds at taking this chip off? And that is what we're going to do right now. We're going to improve your odds. So what we're going to do is we're going to be taking a pair of tweezers, and you can do this at home. You do not need to buy these. Like Just buy any pair of tweezers that you do micro-soldering with, and you can do this. I personally am using these right here because I like the shape of them. That's why. I like how they feel in my hand. But what I did, and this is the important part, is you can see that the hooks on these, I'm sorry, you can see that the points on these are kind of hooked, right? And the reason that they're like that is because when I'm taking an IC chip off, I'm coming down, I'm finding an access point, and you guys can see right here, actually you cannot see that. Okay, I'm coming down here. I'm finding an access point where I can get my tweezers in, right? And I'm just going to gently lift the board up. You guys can see down here, uh, yeah, y'all can see down here in the side video that I'm lifting it up. You can tell by that little shadow right here. 
See how I'm lifting the board a little bit? But you can see that it's because I'm hooked under the IC chip. I'm, I'm lifting it up. Now, what is lifting up the IC chip going to do for us? If you've been paying attention going back through Micro Shuttering 101, which is a lot of the theory, uh, it's a playlist on the channel, or if you want to check out the wiki, and then that combines or goes and moves into 102, which is all the practice stuff, the one thing that you're going to notice is that we've been working with something called the gravity method, where we let the motherboard itself do the work for us so it can do it at a much faster reaction rate than we can do it. Because if we need to make the decision on picking up that chip, that's just a little too much time where the entire area is at a wetting temperature. That's dangerous. And I think that's where people start to get scared with it. And since they're using flux, they're not going to be able to see what I'm about to show you right now. So let's get in here and actually take this thing off. Like I said, we're not going to use the straight tweezers. We're going to use the hook tweezers. And like I said, you can make this yourself. It's not that big a deal, okay? And we're going to follow the rules of engagement that I previously set forth in terms of aiming your hot air in the right position. It'd be smart if I turn my station on. And there we go. And what that means is that I'm going to be aiming the heat this way. And you'll notice that if you come down here, and I'm hoping that you guys can see, yeah, you guys can see this in the bottom video here. Um, when you lift up the chip, you definitely want to kind of counterbalance it so that it's not the board's not kind of going one way or another. It's just lifting straight up. And this is much easier said than done. Don't, don't worry so much. Um, and you can actually come in here. I'm lifting it up. And you can almost stick the hot air directly in the, uh, I would say, arms of the tweezer. And watch it down in the bottom corner here. You're going to see the motherboard drop when it's ready. Hopefully that was not too subtle of a drop there. Um, but the deal is, and this is this is this is the visual sign I want you to see. This is why we're not using flux. Okay, you see it right there. I'll use the straight ones to show you. Okay, you see how flat the top of that. Uh, that solder is. In fact, look at the one next to it. Do you see, I don't know if y'all can see in the video, but you see there's a ring around this solder ball. I really don't know if you can see it. It's something you might only be able to experience in your own microscope. I might be able to find a picture for you. But what that is, is the indention of the pad IC side, meaning that this IC released at the exact moment that the top joint was at the proper temperature. Safe. You're safe. 100% safe. That's it. That's the secret. We've been doing it the whole time. It's the gravity method. You just need a pair of hook tweezers. Lift it up just a little bit. Bada bing, bada boom. It's not that big of a deal anymore. All right, you made it to the end of another video. You know what that means? That means that you learned something brand new today that you didn't know yesterday. So do me a favor, leave a big old thumbs up on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Making sure to turn those notifications on just so that you know about everything I'm trying to put out. And if you especially like this video, share it on your social media so that others can also benefit from free electronics repair training. On top of that, we do sell all the tools that you see in the videos. Um, all you got to do is head on over to shop.artof.repair and you can see the vendors that purchase from me so that you can support them so that they can support me. Anyway, y'all know it's a mouthful. I love you guys. I will catch you later.